All right, everyone, back to talking about net neutrality. Of course, I think it was a couple months ago I made the last video I did on it, and I said, at first, I was not on board with net neutrality because I was like, yeah, well, what's the point? It's like the ISPs are never going to do anything. Then I was like, well, the way that they're kind of trying to structure net neutrality, at least, you know, now, uh, as opposed to maybe in the Obama era, uh, sounds okay. It sounds better than the alternative, despite the fact that there's an, a much easier solution, which is an internet of constitutional amendment. But I'll point this out, and here's my problem. I noticed that a significant proportion of all of those people who are saying, yes, let's have net neutrality, which, you know, that's fine, prevent the ISPs from, you know, making things problematic, potentially. The, the thing is, a lot of those people don't believe in free speech, like on actual websites on the internet. They don't have a problem with a domain registrar abusing a site because, you know, oh, then it's not censored enough. They don't have a problem with some major figure, some content creator getting kicked off a site for something that is not against the law, under U.S. law. It's not particularly even necessarily out there. Somebody else got offended by it. It's, it's basically other people's witch hunt style, uh, lynch mob, vigilante style collective opinions or the opinion of some propagandist media outlet. Like, you know, again, like when the New York Times does a hit piece against some content creator. Now, let me, let me structure this uh, so that I can explain what I mean here. When I, when I call you a hypocrite, if you support net neutrality, but you do not support the idea of, of total free speech beyond, you know, criminal stuff. Uh, or maybe pornography, it's a totally different industry. And I think that one, most people agree that it has its own sites, not really that restricted, whatever. Um, if, if you support net neutrality, but you don't support free speech and other aspects, I believe you're a hypocrite and, and here's why. What you're saying is it is important for ISPs not to be able to manipulate uh, what is seen on the internet in a fiscal sense by like bundling things together, charging you more for certain sites. Like maybe they come to an agreement with, with Twitter and stab Facebook in the back and say, okay, well, Facebook's going to be part of a different package that you have to pay an extra $3.99 a month to get. And so naturally maybe that, that harms them over time. Okay. Why specifically would you be averse to this happening? It's, it's specifically because you want access to all of the content that's on the sites. You want free access. You don't want those groups to be screwed. Now, the, the legal uh, sense that people would use would be, well, it's, you know, it's free expression, these sites. Uh, they have the right to compete evenly. And I, as a consumer, have the right to shop around for this stuff on my own volition. There shouldn't be basically a paywall put in place by the ISP between me and the content that I wish to consume. That's right. So why would you want an independent website, which is, it's the same thing. It's just an independent technological site. Why would you want them essentially putting up a similar wall by forcing certain types of content creators to have to go, you know, these are independent individuals. I would think that the threshold for them being protected under the First Amendment would be, would be considerably less than trying to construe that an ISP or a social media site has some sort of First Amendment rights. I would think for the individual, it's relatively ironclad. It's obvious that that's what the First Amendment pertains to. There's more of a roundabout when you're talking about a business entity that's constructed out of multiple people. And so you're saying that the site, the, the corporate entity, oddly enough, should have free speech, free expression, that it should be free market, oddly enough. And most of the people you know, supporting this, are like on the left, you're supporting basically essentially a guarantor of a free market system. Uh, although it's also government interventionism in a way, it's, it's kind of weird. And of course, ISPs did not, uh, even though net neutrality technically wasn't the law of the land at the time, uh, they never actually did any of the things that <laughs> the people who are proponents of it are worried about. But I can tell you where there is an attempt to censor and throttle information and manipulate results and manipulate everything else. It's on every search engine on the internet. It's on all the social media sites. YouTube is actively algorithmically demoting some people's material, especially with regards to social commentary. I can tell you absolutely, looking at my own stats, a few weeks ago, YouTube began algorithmically demoting non-priority users that were engaged in political discourse. They're probably doing this in order to buff up the audiences of groups like CNN and Fox that are using the streaming service. Ah, because that makes YouTube 
more money. Somebody likes that content, they see that they're also offering a streaming bundle, you know, the unlimited package. How is that any different? How is the structure of an Facebook? Great example. Facebook moving towards a, a system, they're testing this in places like Sri Lanka and Cambodia right now, where uh, news services, you know, if you wanted to appear on people's news feeds instead of just the regular feed, you would have to pay Facebook. How is that any different from the exact type of system you're worried about being put into place by an ISP? How is it any different? You're talking about people have to pay money. It's like if you were paying for a bunch of Google ad space, do you honestly think that they would throttle your content on YouTube? It wouldn't happen. They would never kick you off. You would have to go out of your way specifically to try to get kicked off. You'd, you'd have to go on an on a hour-long rant where you literally lay waste to the whole world, use every swear under the sun, you'd have to be racist, you'd have to be sexist, you'd have to be a total uh, shithead, basically, to get yourself kicked off if you were pumping enough money onto the platform. That's why they created the priority user category that you can't see, it's invisible, but it's certainly in effect. And no independent content creator is part of that category. Look, the richest independent content creators, someone like PewDiePie, their entire income is a drop in the bucket of just the advertising budgets of a group like CNN. So you're telling me that's not a problem. That's no, that's their prerogative. They're a private company. Well, then what about the ISPs? Why aren't they private companies? And if there's some difference, then why don't we just apply the public utility mentality, the net neutrality mentality to uh, social media? Here's my idea. You're an individual, right? So you're, you're worried that you won't be able to like, you know, afford and pick and choose sort of. You don't want an ISP telling you essentially what sites are going to load quickly for you, which sites will be accessible without some special premium plan. Okay, you're, you're afraid of having, uh, you know, content removed from your grasp because of the whim of a private company. That's basically what it boils down to. Why would you want some social media firm going after, headhunting after, hiding, algorithmically manipulating, demoting material, de-verifying users who themselves aren't even corporate in nature? Shouldn't it be your choice whether you patronize my content or whether you watch Sargon or whether you, you know, you can watch H.A. Gibbon or you can watch a million people on YouTube. You can pay attention to a million different Twitter accounts. You can go to a million different Facebook pages. You can use, why, why exactly should we have to construct a whole new category of technology, alternative tech, stuff like Minds.com, Gab.ai, uh, Vidme, BitChute, and by the way, while at the same time, don't you find it a little bit suspect that despite the diversity of users on these sites, like Minds is practically left libertarian central, Sargon's the main user there, despite that fact, you do find it slightly odd that the same media groups, that are now streaming on major sites, that pay them huge amounts in ad money, that get as well ads on their own sites that are, uh, they're partnered with them. They, uh, you know, something like GM or Ford, uh, putting ads both on the social media sites as well as on like a Google. Don't you find it odd that they spew obvious lies and propaganda about both the alt tech sites that we're now having to gravitate towards as well as the private individuals. Look, we're, we're regular civilians. We're totally regular people. I don't make a seven figure salary. And yet I'm, my name is in several hit pieces about the tech world online. I think Mashable included me in an article uh, back during the election. They put me on an article, right? Wing Watch talks about me and, and labels me some sort of gatekeeper to the Nazi world. Don't you find it a little bit odd that some, and sometimes it's self-destructed. Hell, some of these sites, they compete ultimately more with the legacy media. They're more like independent content creators, and yet they're still doing the same game. It doesn't even make sense to me. So when the Wall Street Journal comes out and says PewDiePie is dog whistling to the alt-right for attention, uh, don't you find that a little bit odd of it, a site that, you know, spends millions and millions in ads to advertise its existence to the world because it's too inept to do that by having a, a regular YouTube channel or Facebook page and managing it like a normal person would, like an average civilian or an independent media site would. Don't you find it a little bit odd that those hit pieces keep coming on the same people while at the same time they stress that they want net neutrality? Isn't that a little bit hypocritical? Yeah, the ISP should not be able to throttle, manipulate, block, or censor. But social media sites should be able to do all of the above. They can be trusted. They're, that's totally fine. That's not a public utility. It's not like 
a half a dozen or so sites basically control all free speech maneuvering that happens online. Look, for literature, you're talking Amazon and its Create Space partner, POD. Uh, that, that's where your books are coming from. YouTube is where 99% of the video footage is being put. Um, WordPress is where you know most of the blogs and some of the smaller sites are hosted. Facebook, it's where people have, you know, they put their private info on there for Zuckerberg to filter through to make sure that they're not a Russian agent, I guess. Twitter is, is sort of, you know, the phone app that lets you do the Twittering thing. You got like Snapchat. You've got a handful of sites, a few, a few dozen tops that control an inordinate proportion of all of the flow of info online. The, the excuse used by net neutrality folks is, hey, you know, sometimes there might only be one ISP for an area. Well, yeah, no shit. There's no real competition. And even where there is overlap, it's like, what, three, four companies, they could easily fix prices. They could easily, easily form a trust, but, you know, half the time you don't even want the government to do trust busting. Like when they said that AT&T would have to sell, I mean, uh, Time Warner would have to sell CNN. You got all up in the government's ass, oddly enough, actually attacked the uh, uh, bureaus that were saying that it would form a monopoly. While at the same, yeah, I mean, you're defending a mega corporation merger deal that would screw you. I don't understand. So I support net neutrality in spirit as better than the alternative, although again, there are better alternatives available. It's just to expand the Constitution, make it clear. Anyone functioning on the US-based internet, because we own basically all of that infrastructure, you will abide by the First and Fourth Amendments. No selling private user data, doesn't matter whether you're an ISP or a social media site, don't sell private data, identifiable in nature, of course. If it's like metadata that's just compiled, you're never gonna stop them, um, everyone does this anyway, so it's like, fuck it, who cares? If it's not illegal or pornographic in nature, then it's allowed on your sites just to leave it alone. By the way, these sites that make so much more money, they're not even understanding. All we have to do is extend the constitution, exonerate the social media firms based in the US from policing that content. They would have, do you realize how much lower their overhead would be in policing that content? So much lower. There's a difference between somebody's spamming the site full and, and screwing around with them somebody's uh you know posting porn on there and somebody merely being oh they're being a little offensive oh they said something that hurt my feelings who cares about your feelings so it might hurt somebody's feelings that that some uh service has to be some some person might decide that netflix is evil so you know well this shouldn't be offered in this bundle because it's sinful or something they might say, well, I really, really hate Fox News because it's just propaganda and I'm on the left, so it should not be allowed to uh, use, it should be throttled by my ISP. It'd be the same excuse. It'd be the same explanation. It'd be the same reasoning, the same weird mentality. No, you're just pro-censorship. You're not pro-free speech. You're not pro-free expression. If you support net neutrality, that's great, but you got to take it further. I propose an internet constitutional amendment to explicitly protect the private content creation of individuals within this country. From any foreign legalism, because of course European style authoritarianism has begun to creep onto these sites. We need to smack that down as quickly as possible. Look, they're doing it for fiscal reasons. They're trying to destroy US innovation because they're fighting with one arm tied behind their back. They've got a bunch of so-called uh, fucking hate speech laws and stuff. We don't have that problem in the US. They're seeking to make force U.S. firms in order to do business here. You're going to have to hobble your own U.S. creators too. We want to be able to compete evenly. We don't want every bit of slightly out there content to be coming from the U.S. because we're not, our citizens aren't allowed to make it and we're not changing our laws, blah, blah, blah. That's what they want. They just want a slice of that tens of billions of dollars pie. That's what the European Union fucking wants. We need to smack that down and we need to permanently protect the U.S. user base from the authoritarianism of third world zealot regimes too. Look, why don't you just extend blasphemy laws to YouTube? You know, what, you know the, the Ma Offensives, who cares about Ma Offensive? There are millions of users who are Islamic on YouTube, so, you know, criticism of Islam should be banned. There are lots of Christians. Well, you can't criticize Jesus. There are lots of Hindu users. Don't you say anything bad about Brahma? Don't, don't show yourself eating beef. Where is it exactly going to end? How do you determine which, uh, which tales of what people find offensive are proper versus improper to police on your sites? You don't have to do that. You should stop policing all of them. So don't give me the net neutrality bullshit. 
if you're not also going to stand for free speech net wide because it's pointless it doesn't matter if the isps throw look the way social media is working now and social media is where you spend probably 90 percent of your time maybe more maybe 100 percent maybe you only use facebook and twitter and like half a dozen other sites the whole internet for anything other than e-commerce and using amazon or ebay this is a very small number of sites uh, absorbing most of your time or their subsidiaries like oh yeah i love this blog that's an independent site no it's run by google or wordpress that's where it comes from and their domain registrars there are only a handful of those too they begun to try to abuse sites they tried to kick gab off because my nazis which is totally uh, foolish it's a uh, morons a fool's errand uh you got to support that too support an internet constitution or at least the idea that these sites shouldn't be throttling user user material look youtube has openly avowedly begun doing exactly that it created an entirely new cast of users that by the way again is totally invisible you can't see who's on this list priority creators their algorithms skip over even checking their content what if one of those accounts gets hacked by the way and somebody posts something illegal i would uh i would wonder exactly what would be done the algorithm would ignore it it would never check it a uh, human would never check it probably either. There wouldn't be any review because anyone trying to flag it, it's like they'll be totally ignored. You can't flag their content. So if Jimmy Kimmel wants to come out uh, with a skit that anyone else wouldn't be able to post because it would be flagged down for indecency, uh, he's welcome to do that. He's the only one who can be a little bit edgy because he's trustworthy because he's rich or he's trustworthy because he's famous. No, that's not what built the internet. The internet was built by a bunch of freaks and weirdos posting freaky and weird material. It wasn't built by the mainstream. The mainstream hated the internet at first. They said, what the fuck is this gimmick? This will never take off. There were people that predicted the internet would be like the fax machine. Oh, yeah, uh, so people use email. And they're never going to do anything else on the internet. What's there to do? Ooh, IRC. No, people get bored of this in a few years. Don't worry. They'll never innovate this. It'll never get cooler. Oh, oh, I see someone they posted a picture online. Nobody will ever create, you know, entire catalogs of pictures searchable worldwide. Never happened. They ignored it. They made a miscalculation. Now they're trying to pick up the pieces so that they can consolidate their control over it. It's not just net neutrality that we need. If, if you're going to have net neutrality extended to all of these large sites that keep trying to uh, abuse their own user base. You know, you should be, you as the consumer should be the one deciding what kind of material you wish to observe on these sites. It shouldn't be up to the site itself unless it is criminal or pornographic in nature or it's outright spam. Those are the only three categories that they should be uh, able to flag anyone for uh, internet wide. As for people in Europe or other authoritarian regions that would get offended, that it would be against the law for them to even watch half that content. Well, so what? Let your own governments filter the material. Let them very visibly say, hey, citizens, we're going to set up a filter on the whole internet to tell you what you can and cannot look up. And we're going to jail you if you try to go around it. Let them be the, the uh, outward totalitarians. We don't need that stuff. I would say that it's uh, unpatriotic as well. No, really, uh, for U.S. standards, the idea that some private firm would say, well, we're going to pick and choose what kind of information you can absorb. It's exactly the opposite of what was intended for us. Because it's a bad idea. Everyone else was already doing that. It never worked. Never, uh, never will work, by the way. There will always be some groups that stand up for freedom. Unfortunately, it's being made harder and harder for those of us with an established presence who can actually get word out, hey, you know, freedom's a good thing. It's not a bad thing. Uh, the problems attending it are, are easier to deal with than the problems attending too little liberty, uh, which is a you know a mishmash of Thomas Jefferson's statement on the subject, of course. Uh, can't remember the exact quote. Sorry about that. He has free speech, too. Uh, even from the grave. Uh, yeah, th there's, there's no problem with having free speech on the net. There are plenty of problems with trying to remove it, though. I would say that that's a, a verse to our very nature. That's about all. Peace out.